개발한 그 동기는 어, A major part of what spurred the development of brain education was that when I was as a young child, I had um, ADHD, and it was very difficult for me to focus in school. So I had a I had a hard time in school. 그러므로 인해서 그 뇌에 대한 그 관심. So before I took on this active interest in the brain, I was first interested in myself. And in the same way, although a lot of time passed. I could never be interested in academic studies. I had a hard time even in primary school and middle school and high school as well. But even though I couldn't adjust in school, I still had to keep taking tests. Nobody ever asked for my permission, but I had to keep taking tests um, again and again. And so life at school was really miserable for me. I knew what kind of scores I would expect in terms of my test results. And, but I wasn't ready at all, and I still had to keep taking those tests. And it really was like torture. That's the kind of time I had in primary school and middle school and high school. And so I was wondering if the problem lied in me, if it was my problem or if it was a problem with the school systems and the educational system. And at the time, everybody said it was my problem. And so I started to pay more attention to myself. And then that concern and attention and interest in myself gradually became shifted to my brain. And I felt that I really wasn't being respected. But as in the midst of that hardship and struggle, I really felt that I was hurt a lot. But in spite of all the hurt I had inside, uh, in a place deep in my mind, there was a, a very a brilliant light that was shining. So the moment that I discovered I had this absolute value inside of myself that would not be altered or that could not be determined by my academic record or my test scores, then I, I developed trust in myself and I had conviction and confidence in myself. And so thus I discovered my my true value and my sense of self-worth. And I also became able to find the work that I was meant to do. And I also came to know that there really are so many people around me who are also unable to adjust to the environment at school and are suffering a lot and going through a lot of hardship. So then I realized that anybody who discovers the value in their brain can really demonstrate their creative power, and, and, I, and this is something that everyone has. And so this inner value, which was very difficult for me to find, um, I really want everyone to be able to find it much more easily than I did, and that's what motivated me to develop brain education. You know, the last 10 to 20 years, research from brain sciences has really exploded. We're learning every day more and more about how the brain thinks and how the brain learns. And yet, I started to see that this information wasn't being taught to teachers. There were many fields developing neuroeconomics, neuroesthetics, neuro law, but I realized that. Of all of those fields, neuroeducation should take prominence over all of them because of all professionals who should be consumers of this research, it's got to be educators, those who are shaping the human brain. And so I was a school principal at the time before I became a professor of education, and um, I decided that what education needed was to bring this to teachers in a way that they could understand it. Teachers aren't going to read scientific journals. And so my work in creating the brain-targeted teaching model um, in the early 2000s was to be able to bring this in a way that's accessible to teachers so that they understood how emotions work and how the brain processes emotions and attention. Um, and I love the way Ilchi Lee talked about um, his difficulties in school. Um, if teachers understand more about how children think and learn, they'll be able to create 
better interventions. Um, and so my motivation was really to make this work accessible to the very people who needed it the most, and that's for teachers.